Today, we go to Flint, Michigan, for a Democracy Now! special, Thirsty for Democracy, the Poisoning of an American City. In two, April 2014, an unelected emergency manager appointed by Michigan Governor Rick Snyder switched the source of Flint's drinking water from the Detroit system, which they've been using for half a century, to the corrosive Flint River. Officials thought they could save something like $5 million. Soon after, Flint residents were complaining about discolored and foul-smelling water, which was causing a host of health problems. First, the water was infested with bacteria. To treat the bacteria, the city poured in chlorine, which created a cancerous chemical byproduct called trihalomethanes, or TTHMs. A deadly outbreak of Legionnaire's disease, which is caused by a waterborne bacteria, then spread through Flint, killing 10 people and sickening dozens. At the same time, underground, the Flint River water was corroding Flint's aging pipes, poisoning the drinking water with lead, which can cause permanent damage, especially in children. Well, this past weekend, we went to Flint to learn the remarkable story of how Michigan Governor Rick Snyder and other officials ignored and covered up residents' complaints for a year and a half, and how Flint fought back with protests, citizen journalism, a new elected mayor, and a massive resident-led testing project. What took so long? Who is responsible? Today, thirsty for democracy. We spent the weekend in Flint. I'm Amy Goodman. This is Democracy Now! We're in Flint, Michigan, at the Golden Gate Restaurant. It's a cold, snowy Saturday morning. Inside, the Flint Democracy Defense League is having breakfast in a meeting. I want to go in and talk to Clara McClinton. She's one of the lead organizers for democracy in Flint, against the poisoning of the Flint water. She's been challenging the emergency managers for years. Let's go inside. In 2011, this governor, Governor Snyder, signed into law a law called the Emergency Manager Law. It enabled the governor to send an emergency manager, under the guise of being fiscally responsible, to cities and school districts that they deemed financially in fiscal crisis. It just so happened most of these places were majority African-American cities privatizing services and selling off assets. That's their main purpose. Well, here in uh, Flint, they've privatized our garbage collection. Uh, they've sold off our parks. Was Santa Claus sold off? Yes. That's how, that's how low we've gotten. <laughs> they sold Santa Claus, the Santa Claus that was, was mounted on top of City Hall every year. Tell us what happened. There is a, a coordinated, aggressive effort to privatize our water system. And this is how we came to this poison water catastrophe. How? We were being told that the Detroit water system, which we got our water from, was charging too much money, and we're going to build this new pipeline so you folks can have cheaper water. While we build the pipeline, why don't we go to the river? You know the one that General Motors dumped all that crap and stuff in, all the industrial toxins and stuff? We'll go to that river on, in the interim. And this, these decisions were made by an emergency manager. And that's the untold story about the problem we have here. We've, we don't have a, just a water problem. We got a democracy problem. We got a dictatorship problem. We got a problem of being stripped of our democracy as we've known it over the years. And for someone to come to our city, a proud city with a rich labor history. You're from an auto workers family. You have a long history here. Talk about how that influenced you. We had the first city of our size to elect the African American mayor. We passed a open housing ordinance in the city of Flint, one of the first, very historic. We have such a rich history, the sit-down strike of 1937. We're just not the type of people that's used to being walked on. That's Claire McClinton of the Democracy Defense League. While she was conducting her breakfast meeting, a woman came in extremely upset, named Kawana Armstrong. She said she needed to get clean water to her infant grandson. Another woman, a member of the meeting, Audrey Muhammad, said she had just bought water, and she would give it to Kawana. 
So they went out into the parking lot to take the water from Audrey's trunk and put it into Kiwana's. So you came into this restaurant this morning, and um, you met with this woman who uh, you just bumped into her. And can you tell me your name? It's Audrey Muhammad. And you heard that she's trying to get some clean water for her infant grandson. Yes, ma'am. So why do you have this in your trunk? Well, I went to the store the other day um, and purchased the water for myself, and I just hadn't taken it out the car so she can have it. I'll go get some more. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem at all. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yes, I really do. Yes, I appreciate it. What will you do with this water? It's for my grandson. It's for my grandson. Mm -hmm. My first grandchild, and it's a boy. Yes. It's for my grandson. He was born February 6th. That's my concern. It's my grandson. That's yes. my concern. Yes, and it's a shame. This is 2016, and we living like this. And this man want us to pay for this. Sorry, it's frozen, below. It's all right. Do you have to pay for water? I mean, this... I've been buying water to drink forever, for the longest. I mean paying for the water in your tap. Oh, yeah. I just paid a shut-off notice January 6th, $196. Wait, they were going to shut your poisoned water off? I guess they sent me a shut-off notice. I got the shut-off notice the day after Christmas, and it was for December 29th, and I called down there, and they told me my water about to be shut off at any time. So a friend of mine, while I was at work, she went down there and paid my, my shut-off notice $196. How do you feel about paying for this contaminated water? I'm not comfortable with it at all, and I don't think it's fair. The cold water, especially in my kitchen, when I turned it on, it had this foul raw egg smell. This is when they first connected to the right. river? I went down there to the city and I talked to Howard, because even my postman was complaining about the smell. And Howard is the head of a water and At that time, public works. At that time, he was. And because he, my uh, postman parked his truck right there in front of my house, and there's a drain there. And we thought it was something in the sewage, OK? But it got worse, especially the hot days when Flint was like 85, 90 degrees. When you turn the faucet on, it was just, it was, it was dark brown. Then as the water ran, it go golden brown. So when um, Claire called me and told me about Virginia Tech was coming in to test the water and, and uh, the professor was doing it free, I volunteered. And they came in my house uh, the first week of August because I got my results back and I tested positive for lead. They still okay frozen, are they? I'm going to use this for my grandbaby. But you know a thing, I want to ask Governor Snyder, because he had the, he been having the town hall meetings mm -hmm. during early in the day, and I'm at work. Where do you work? Uh, at TRW Automotive in uh, Tyrone Township. Um, and I got a, a message uh, on my phone telling me to hold the line, but when they called, it was like 10.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. I have to be at work I at 6. If it was his grandchild, would he want this? I don't have the money he have. I respect him because he's the governor of Michigan. But if it was his grandchild, would he want it? So we've just come from the Golden Gate restaurant in Flint, actually Flint Township. And this is very interesting, where the Democracy Defense League was meeting over breakfast. That particular restaurant gets water from Flint Township, which is not the corrosive Flint River. But right across Flushing Road, you got it, Flushing Road, that's where they're linked up to the Flint River. Right here at St. Michael's Church, scores of people have gathered. They're going to be canvassing houses, seeing what people need. And they're all also formulating demands for the governor. Help us to reestablish good drinking water here in Flint on a regular basis, a safe basis that we can learn to trust again. Let's talk to Nayira Sharif. She's with Democracy Defense League and Flint Rising. Can you talk about what the big challenge is today? Well, there's many people who don't know, like, what to use with their water, with the lead in their water. Then also, there's a challenge of accurate information, so that's the need of us going door to door, handing out accurate information, um, lifting up, like, everyone's stories, because everyone has been impacted by this water crisis, and to make sure that they have their basic needs not met, so fresh water, um, filters, like, replacement filters, and so we're also delivering those, too. Um, 
can you talk about your response to the governor uh, recall, the attempts to recall the governor? There's many people around the state who feel like his response to this crisis has been inadequate and really a violation of human rights. What do you think should happen? Well, the people who want to recall him, if a petition goes in front of me, I will sign it. Um, but right now, my, my efforts is to make sure that people have accurate information and that we push for some of these long-term solutions that, regardless of who's in office, that they're going to have to address. And what are those long-term solutions? For us to have, like, our pipes replaced, for Flint residents to be made whole, to have adequate health care and wraparound services for everyone who has been impacted by the water crisis, so the children who have lead poisoning, what sort of lifetime services are going to be available for them, making sure that residents, not only like the pipes or the modern mains are replaced, but residents' homes and appliances are also replaced. And finally, like we're still paying like a premium price for toxic water, so we need to remedy that. I'm Lori Carpenter. I'm with Crossing Water with a small NGO based out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. And we are activated based on these canvassers who go out, and if they find that there's need in the houses based on whether they need water, they need water for filters, they're homebound, elderly, if they have other social service needs. We have a team of social workers that we've hooked up with the National Association of Social Workers out of Michigan. And we have, they're all volunteers, we're all volunteers. We have plumbers, maintenance people, we have paramedics, firefighters. We go out in teams to the houses and we provide the services that we're activated for. Maybe we could go inside and you could introduce me to folks and we'll talk sure. to them. Water, no filters, nursing moms, pregnant moms. Uh, homebound folks, seniors, okay? Um, and those are the, the, tr the priorities. Just to add one thing real quick. So if somebody asks for water, we always give everybody water. If they need water, if they ask for water, we don't ask any questions, we don't ask for any ID, we don't ask for any names. It's yes. You may run into folks' households, you, you bring water in, and you see they've got a whole wall of water already. They're hoarding water. So some folks are really put off by that. And I've got kind of a different take on that. If I had a family and I couldn't get water to them, I sure as hell would be hoarding every bottle of water that came to me. I'd be going to every fire station filling up because you don't know when the next bottle of water is coming to you. My name is Leo Wilhelm, and we're with IATSC Local 38 from Detroit. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing here today in Flint? We're here to volunteer, um, help pass out water or canvas, whatever the AFL-CIO needs us to do. And can you talk about how you got word and uh, how you were organized to come here? Um, it was really, it kind of welled up from uh, our, our last union meeting, actually. Uh, these guys were talking about it, milling about after the meeting, and just wanted to do something. I'm Melissa Mays from What Are You Fighting For? And it's a play on words, so it's water, W-A-T-E-R, you fighting for. Melissa, do you live in Flint? I do live in Flint. How have you been affected by the poisoned water? Well, all three of my sons are anemic now. Um, they have bone pain every single day. They miss a lot of school because they're constantly sick. Their immune systems are compromised. Myself, I have seizures. I have diverticulosis now. I have to go in February 25th for a consultation on a liver biopsy. Almost every system of our bodies have been damaged, and I know that we're not the only one. I'm getting calls from people that are so sick, and they don't know what to do. How old are your boys? 11, 12, and 17 and they're wonderful kids that they put forth all this effort to get straight A's, to get good grades. My oldest, it's little things that he seems to forget, like pluses and minuses, um, different words he can't, he can't, there's a brain fog that's settled on everybody. Mayor Weaver has called for $55 million to replace the lead pipes. Is that happening? Um, it's still, we're still waiting. Um, the governor said you can have 25 million of that. 55 million is just a start to get the lead service lines out, because the plumbers are also talking about how the copper lines need to go, as well as galvanized. Any kind of metal has been so corroded, and, and these byproducts are all neurotoxins. So you've got copper, lead, aluminum, tin, chromium, things that our bodies can't handle, and these pipes need to go. And so the 55 million is a start to get to the most needed people, the pregnant, the elderly, the small children. And he, out of 55 million, said 25 million. What should happen with Governor Snyder? 
I feel that he's in the way. He has been standing in the way of us getting the funding that we need to get these pipes replaced, to get crews in here, to get it going and get it started. So he needs to be removed from office. He just doesn't show any real concern. Um, it, it, he has not put any effort into actually making up for the failures of his agencies. So he just needs to go. We're in from New York, you know, from where 9-11 took place, the attacks on the World Trade Center in Washington, the Pentagon. Um, the government said after that the biggest fear was an international terrorist would poison uh, the water supply of a major city. Well, an international terrorist didn't do this, but a major city's water supply was poisoned. Your city, Flint. Um, the government, the Michigan government, the governor, uh, Rick Snyder, involved with this. What are your thoughts? Well, it's bad enough that the Geneva Convention says in an act of war, you cannot poison a city's water supply. Um, we're not in war, but guess what? It kind of seems like it because a whole city's water supply was poisoned by our state government. And it allowed to continue. I mean, they knew in October of 2014 when General Motors said we cannot use this water anymore because it's corroding our parts. The water is bad. The city lost $400,000 in revenue. So that had to be signed off on by the emergency manager and the governor. They knew the water was bad then. And if it was not okay for car parts, how is it okay for citizens? And the Democratic primary presidential debate is happening here on March 6th. Do you know where it's happening? Are you going to be there? Uh, Hillary Clinton was here recently. We hear Bernie Sanders is coming in before the debate. What demands do you have of them? I want to know what they're going to do about this. I want to know that if they become president, if they're elected, what are they going to do to stop this? Because it's not just happening in Flint. This is happening in other cities, and the environmental injustice needs to stop. They need to stop putting it off. They need to stop ignoring the problem and hoping that it'll go away. So I want to hear strong statements and commitments by the presidential candidates that they're not going to allow this to happen anywhere else. Do you mind if we follow you as you go out into the community to give out water? No, no, I welcome it. I want people to see what's actually happening to us and what we have to do to help each other. We're volunteering to check to see if you have water, if you have a filter. Yes, I have all of those things. Okay, are there any, um, she's going to ask you this, we're just checking on everybody. These are real quick. My name's Melissa Mays, and um, we're volunteering, checking on how everything's going with the water situation, and so we just have a few questions. Just as we're trying to make sure that nobody gets left out or forgotten. Are you Floyd by chance? No, no, okay. I'm not Floyd. What's your Floyd Path. My name is Troy. Okay. Hi, Troy. I'm Lena. I'm a volunteer. And I'm Melissa Mays. I live here. Do you have a water filter? Yes, I do. And how long have you had that? I had my filter probably about maybe about four weeks. Four weeks. Okay. Um, and do you have replacement cartridges for it? Yeah, I stopped okay. to get all that. And how often are you replacing them? Well, since I don't be here because of uh, the situation, yeah. I'm always, you know, I go on our skirts to do what oh, I got to okay. do because then they just had a break over there on Stewart Street, <laughs> and I'm so close to it, so I decided not to be trying to get Good. in it because, Smart. but as far as getting in it, I've been in it for two years okay. without you. knowing it, so I'm not going around to say what I have to say about it. I'm, whatever's in me is already in me. And uh, I just accepted it and just prayed that whatever that's in me, uh, they come up with something to help me get it out of me. So, yes, I'm affected by it, if that's what you're trying to get to. Yeah, is well, it a discomfort? Yes, it is. It's yeah. all this going through, what I've been sacrificing for families and friends, getting them water. That's why, by the van being open, I was blessed to be able to be a blessing for others. I kind of want to hug you because we're all in this together, <laughs> yeah, and it's just so, terrible. So, yeah, so based on all that, everything is discomfort from everything. You cannot, you got babies, you got there ain't enough water to, at one time to get in the tub to give them what they need. There's people that are affected that don't know they're affected. As you can see, totally. My skin's falling off. I have totally dryness from the water, taking baths in this. I believe I'm affected by it. Bone pain, muscle pain. Uh, yeah, I don't have, yeah, I don't have the energy that I normally have uh, and all that, so, and I know I'm affected by it. So now we just got to deal with the after effects and yeah. also not helping with that either. Yeah, so so, so the, the say my saying of the, everything, it should have never happened. Agreed. And happening because over saving a little dollars and then you it was a place where plenty of money was made. It's not a poor place. You made it poor.
Flint resident Troy Perkins, just a few of the voices from the front lines of Michigan's water wars. This is Democracy Now!, Thirsty for Democracy, the Poison of American City. While Flint residents are still paying some of the highest water bills in the country, we'll look at how the world's largest water bottling company, Nestle, is pumping millions of gallons of water from aquifers nearby that feed Lake Michigan. We'll be back in a minute. 